Praise the Lord. Okay, we got some Lord lovers in here. We got some Jesus lovers in here. Woo, okay. Shout if you love Jesus. Okay, all right. I love it, I love it, all right. Um, I'm just so happy to be here. Uh, bless the name of the Lord. Um, you know, I'll always say it. I love and s- sort of less than love when I get that voice note from Pasta. <laughs> And he says, you know, on the verge of something like, hey, JB, um, you know, I love you, brother, and uh, just I'm inviting you to, to share the word. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all love, and I love you, Pastor, and thank you for seeing enough in me and to come and bring the word. Um, I'm so blessed at the fact that I was introduced by my sister, Jo. Um, jo helped me realize how much of a recruiter I am. Um, I met Joe at work um, through her cousin, (laughs) and um, we just got to talking about church, and she was just like, oh, man, I'm looking for a home church. And I said, oh, that's great. There's this church on Flatlands. You know, you can go over to that church. Mind you, I had never been to this church. (laughs) I'd never even (laughs) been inside. But I was like, you know, it's in the neighborhood. You should go there. Um, and she came, fell in love, and became a member before I even started joining. Um, but, you know, praise God, praise God, because he knew, he knew what he was doing, and he always does. So I just want to pray really quickly and, and get us all in one accord. Dear God and Heavenly Father, we bless you for your faithfulness, for your love, from, in, from since the beginning, you were here. And we thank you for your presence. God, right now, I ask that you may sit JB down and share the word that you have for your people. Lord God, it is not about me. It is not about my intelligence, my wisdom, or anything that you've put in me, Lord Father God, but it is all about you. I am just the speaker, Lord. Forget about me, Lord, and let it all be about you. And may no one leave here without a double portion of you, Lord. We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, last week Wednesday I was paying attention. And Sunshine came up here. And she gave a word that was quick, fast, and in a hurry. But it was right, it was right on time. So I'm going to try and take out of her. Sunshine, if you're watching, I'm taken out of your book right now, okay? So we're jumping right into the Word. Um, We're going to read from the book of Mark. We're going to read from the book of Mark, chapter 10. And if you're not too tired, I'll ask you to stand for the Word of God. Okay, so we're going to read from verse 17 to 27. As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him, knelt down, and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. Honor your mother and father. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There is still one thing you haven't done. He told him, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? This amazed them. But Jesus said again, dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved? They asked. 
Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. So I tried to come up with, you, can, you may be seated. So I tried to come up with a very cool title for this message, you know, and I was raised out in Brooklyn, so I was really trying to bring out some real Brooklyn slang to this, you know, so I was just like, yeah, God, like, we're going to, we're going to title it this, we're going to title it that, and so one of the, one of the titles I came up with was, am I good? Because, you know, when you're stepping out, you're looking like, am I good? Severa, am I good? You know, and the guy was like, no, not that one. And I was like, all right, cool, no problem. And I was like, we good? Because when you want to make sure that you no longer have any issues with someone, it's like, we good? God was like, nah, nah, that wasn't it. I was like, okay, but I want to bring flair. I want to, I want to, I want to bring a word that's going to have people shouting. And he was like, no. The title of your word is going to be, When Good Isn't Good Enough. (laughs) Thank you, sister. (laughs) Amen. I'm going to drop the mic right now. Um, (laughs) But um, let's think about the word good, right? Good, back then, was such a high honor. If someone called you a good Man, you were a person of repute. If you were good, this was someone that had great standing in the community, you know? And even now, we still hold on to the word good. You know, so if you're going somewhere, you know, if I tell you about a restaurant, you're going to ask me, is the food good? If I tell you to go out to a venue, you're going to want to make sure that the music is good. Right? There was a singles luncheon last weekend, you know, because you want to find a good one. Right? You don't want a mediocre one. You don't want to, eh, I, you know, well, you know, it is what it is. You know? Good is what we hold on to. And it's, and it's funny because I used, to think, I used to think good was somewhere in the middle. You know, there was great. How you feeling? I'm great. And then there's, you know, I'm good. You know, and then just leave me alone, right? Mind your business, I'm from New York, right? But good still holds on very strong to this day. So here comes this guy, and I think about this guy. He's called the the rich young ruler, right? And we don't hear much about him. That's all you really hear. He's a rich young ruler. So in today's standing, he would be an influencer, right? He would be an influencer. He's a social media blue check, uh, YouTube, gold plaque. I want to start a YouTube just to get a gold plaque. I just want to say that. Um, But, you know, he's an influencer. And so I could imagine him saying, like, all right, guys, you know, he started his live, right? And he's like, yo, today we're going to go see Jesus. You know, I've been hearing a lot about him. And so um, you know how I do. Like, I'm going to go out and hang out with the people that are about something. So he started his live you know, had 1.K viewers and watchers at that time, and he runs up to Jesus. And even him running up is something that's out of character for someone of his stature, right? He runs up. He's like, "Ah, all right, you know, and he's got his life. And he's like, all right, Jesus, here we go, here we go. For the people, for the people, what do I have to do to inherit the kingdom of God? But before he even says that, he says, good teacher, Right? And I love sarcastic Jesus. Like, my Bible is, I don't know about your Bible, but my Bible is filled with sarcastic Jesus. And he's like, he's, oh, I I love him so much. (laughs) And so he says, why do you call me good? And I never, like, I never understood why God, why, why Jesus? Like, you are good. Why would you question someone who called you by title? And then he was like, JB, do you know how many people come into my church and call me by title and have no idea who I am? Because he understood at that point in time that this young man 
didn't recognize him as God, but he saw him as another status symbol. And so he was just like, let me, let me check you real quick. There was no one good but God, just to kind of test him, because you're standing right before God, and you don't even recognize it. But he goes, anyway, to answer your question, I love that Jesus. He checked him real quick and then went right back to like, hey, let me, let me, uh, let me still help you out. And he goes ahead and tells him, he says, okay, cool. You want to you inherit the kingdom of God? This is what you got to do. Obey the commandments. And he lists a bunch of commandments. And so the influencer, right, he's like, okay, that's my, what? That's it? That's all I have to do? I've been doing this since I was young. I've, I don't have a problem with that. Obey my mother and father, not cheating, this, that, and the other. I'm a good person. I'm good. Right? You're good. I'm good. We're good. The problem with that is because of what comes next. What comes next after that, he says, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. You got that. Now sell all your possessions. Sell everything that you have. Give it to the poor. Then come and follow me. That was too high a price for this rich young ruler. And so what God wants to ask right now is, What haven't you sold yet? He said, it is hard for the rich to get into heaven. But I'm rich in the name of Jesus, right? Reggie, you're so blessed. You're rich. (laughs) Joe, you're rich. Tracy, we already know about the house on the beach. We know. We know right? You're rich. But if you go ahead and hold yourself an account, are there things within your riches that are keeping you from inheriting the kingdom of God? When the rich young ruler came up, he said, what must I do to be saved? He wanted to, he wanted to negotiate. That's what he came to do. He came to say, all right, cool. Well, you know, what if, I, what if I give you this? Or what if I say that I can provide this? Would that be enough? What if I put you on my live and you put me on your live? But Jesus says, I am the life. Like, you don't get that? You don't see that I'm right in front of you? And what we do that is similar to that is... We say, God, how many times do I have to go to church to be good with you? How much of my tithes do I have to keep consistently giving you for us to be good? What word of encouragement or sermon do I have to do for us to be good? What song do I have to sing? What notes do I have to hit? What riffs? do I have to bring for us to be good? In Matthew 6, 19, we hear where your treasure is, your heart will be. So where is your treasure? You're asking for so many things of God. But yet, are we truly giving ourselves up to God? Or are we willing to hold on to what we want so much that we'll walk away with our heads held down? I love the disciples at this point because the disciples are real to me. The guy walks away, they're like, Who in the world can be saved? I love that line. (laughs) They said, who in the world? And then Jesus turns around and he says, 
With man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So when we go back to that treasure that you're holding on to, that you're holding and you're just like, nah, this is mine. I'll give you the 99, but the one, that 1% one is mine, right? And you might be saying to yourself, this is too hard for me to give up. Like forgiving that person that did me that wrong is too hard for me to give up. Like right now, that's a rich, that's something rich to me. It defines who I am. My anger is too much for me to give up. My lust is too much to give up. My singlehood is too much to give up. Don't shoot the messenger here, but God says. <laughs> and this is, this is not just to single people, this is to single and married. You're holding on to someone that is not assisting you in your singleness. You're like, God, I'm so tired of being single. And God is like, I'm so tired of you being that person that's not your mate. Well, you know, God, until I find the one, they take up the time. And Jesus is like, what, uh, why are you willing to hold on to that when I have the kingdom of God for you? And like, it's so hard. It's so hard to let go of this person. We went through all of quarantine together. <laughs> what are we going to do? And seriously, God is saying that it's true. It is hard with man. With man, it is hard. Married folk, you find yourself in a situation where that person is not your spouse, it is hard because now you're in a mess. You're just like, oh, man, this is, I don't know how to do it. And God says that with man, it is impossible. Now you're busy feeling guilt and you're not sure. With man, it feels impossible. I don't know. I messed up. I can't. With man, it is impossible. I don't know if I can. With man, it is impossible. But with God, with God, with God, all things are possible. That family member that left and you feel will never come, with man. With man, all things seem impossible, but with God, all things are possible. What God doesn't want us to happen today is for us to leave here with our face down low and with what we believe are riches in our pockets. Because God wants us to inherit the kingdom of God. That's what he wants for all of us. And you might be thinking about whatever situation it is that you're going through. Whatever it is. But God is saying that, hey, I know it's hard. I know it seems impossible. For you have to go to the person that may not even recognize when you say, I forgive you. Jesus. I forgive you, Joe. No, I'm <laughs> But I mean, that is so hard. Can you understand? Like somebody did you wrong. And you know, you're being called. Not to be called the bigger person. This is not a situation where you're being called to be the bigger person. God is leading you by the hand and saying, don't worry about it. I got you. I got you. You're going to be good because I'm good and we will be good. That's what's happening here. So when you call that person up, or you text them, or you meet them in person, and it's like, hey, look, you know what? 
You may not even know how the, the depths of how much you hurt me. But I want you to know that you are forgiven. And they turn around and they snap their neck or whatever. I don't care. Never meant anything to me. That's fine. That's fine because you're not the riches I seek after. My life is no longer dependent on whether you'll understand my forgiveness. My life is not dependent on this person that is keeping me company at night. My life is not dependent on whether I make enough. Like I got, <laughs> yesterday I'm heading, I'm heading back from, um, I'm leaving work and my coworkers are like, JB, today's a lucky day. I was like, is it? <laughs> I don't know, I'm just tired. And they're like, yeah, you know, JB, you should play the lotto today. And I said, oh, okay, cool. And so I'm leaving. And for some reason, I've been at this job for going on a whole year. No one leaves when I leave. No matter what, if I leave early, no one's leaving. If I leave late, no one's leaving. Like, I leave by myself. Yesterday, they're leaving with me. They're like, JB, we'll, we'll walk with you. I was like, all right, fine, it's whatever. We walk, and then they stop, and they're like, we're going to buy our tickets here. JB, come on, it's a lucky day. Cool. <laughs> and I went by my business, because they can have their lucky day. I'm looking for my lovely day, my blessed day. My riches are not in that lotto ticket. And someone could say, JB, it's probably because you've played the lotto a couple of times and you never won. Hey, that's fine. That's fine. I'll put myself out there. You'll forgive me, Silvera. You'll forgive me. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that that's not where my riches are. And that's not where our riches need to be. We're not looking to just run up and see Jesus as a status symbol, see church as a status symbol. When we call God good, we have to know the power that is behind that. When we say hallelujah and when we worship the Lord, it's not just to be seen. It's beyond that. God at this point is tired of hearing good with no understanding behind it. He wants you to know that there is no one good but the Father. And that's who we're here to worship. Every time, we, every time we have breath in our lungs and we are awake and we are conscious, it's proof that God is still good. He's been good, will be good, and will forever be good. So tonight... I invite anyone who sees God calling you and you've had this question as to what do I need to be to be good? How can we be good, God? God is saying, do not leave here like the rich young ruler, thinking about all that you have. Do not think about what you have in fact, don't even think about what he can give you. Because right now he's just saying that whatever you have, I am better. I am better. My love for you is so much better. My faithfulness to you is so much better. The thoughts that I have of you are so much better. Do not leave just thinking about the riches because remember, these riches will pass away. They cannot go with you. David said, thy word have I kept in my heart. So if it says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be, then make that the word of God. Make that your relationship with God. 
Because God loves you so, so much. And what's funny that we, that we glossed over, but we're going to finish with, is that when God told him to sell all his riches, it says he looked at the man and loved him. It says he looked at him and loved him. So that means no matter what your situation is, God looks at you and says, I love you. If that's not a place to praise, I don't know what is. God looked at him knowing that he didn't understand who he was, knowing that he just thought about his riches and still said, man, I love this guy. Let me give him this chance. God and Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We worship you and we adore you for we know you are good and your mercies endure forever, God. We just want to take this time to tell you that we love you. And we want you more than anything, God. Lord, if there is any heart in here that is discontent, that is broken, that is bruised, that is needing more of you, God, I pray that you may encounter them, Lord Father God. Do not let them leave here, Father, without knowing you, without gaining the riches that you have for us, that you are for us, God. We bless your name and lift you up above all things, Father God. We know that you, you alone, are everything that we need. I thank you for this word, God. I thank you for your servants, Lord. I thank you for every person that is in this room, Lord. I thank you for everyone that is online, God, that is tuned in. I pray, God, that this may be viral, Lord Jesus. That this may not stay here, Lord Father, but that it may touch each and every corner of this planet, Lord God. That no one will be able to escape this word, which tells people how much you love them, Father God. How much you love us, God. Lord Jesus, we are about to celebrate the greatest sacrifice that you could make on behalf of your love for us, Father. And so we bless your name, Lord Father God, now and then and forevermore. We thank you, we love you, and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be blessed. Please continue to connect with us through our website and our social media platforms.